Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here at Muddy Thumper. So if you're still here, congratulations, that means you have officially made it to episode 2. <laughs> so um, this is the Argo Bogmaster that we're building. I'm going to take you guys along on some updates. So I got the gas tank strapped in there. I've done the seat conversion. Um, it's got like ratchet straps strapped on there for now just to hold the tank in place. I'm going to come up with something better than that. I just wanted to put some peace in mind and just continue on for the time being. Because I'm working on all different stuff, usually all at the same time. <laughs> but anyways, a couple things we're going to be doing in this video. Here are some badges I took off the Argo that I scrapped. Argo 8x8 Magnum. This is a, a 84 Magnum. So I'm going to be putting these on the back here. Kind of like riveting them on somewhere back here. and Look pretty decent. Got them all uh, painted up a little bit and freshened up. So we're going to be adding that on. We're going to try to tackle the winch. This Argo has been missing a winch since day one. It used to have one on the back and like aluminum uh, little bracket, which I, which I didn't like. I am waiting on my new OEM fuel pump. If you recall in the last episode, I ordered an Amazon jobby. It lasted one day and failed. <laughs> so don't mind this wiring. I literally have a temporary electric fuel pump down here. And I have a positive negative, which you might be able to hear it. That's my temporary fuel pump. Just to have this machine movable, otherwise it's kind of like sitting dead weight. So yeah guys, let's go ahead and crack on with episode 2. Um, those badges are going on. This windshield, I bought this down the road off a guy that didn't want an Isergo no more. He said it fogged up. So it's an OEM one. Not sure what year it's off. But you can see it's kind of like a aluminum, aluminum housing. I'm going to take off all these little canopy brackets and see if we can paint this black. Because the new Argos, they have um, like a black one. Aside from that, I have this winch over here that's been in this box for a while. 4,000 pound winch, Champion. It's from Costco. It's only like a $100 winch. We're going to be somehow getting that on this Argo. So I got some uh, 316 rivets here. They should probably work out decent. Just got to swap out the head to fit one on here. Uh, let's see what size. That one fits pretty good. That one don't fit, or that one. So it looks like it's this one right here. This one's actually got a piece of a rivet stuck in it. I need to grab my pliers. Hey, I've only got that little piece of uh, that was sticking out, and I got this set up here. There was a random piece of a rivet that was um, just stuck in here. As you can see, this is going to work out pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape these in place um, evenly on both sides and get ready to stick them on. Okay, so I was gonna put that seat on, but I don't have the proper style hinges that I want. I don't really want to modify them. So I'm over here now, working on the windshield. You can see it has all like the, the canopy like snaps. I'm just taking a screwdriver and popping these out of place because I'm gonna paint this windshield. So I got a flat top. You just kind of gotta get in underneath. Let's see if I can do it over here without bugging you guys too much. You just gotta get it in underneath and you just pop it up out of place and then they'll come out. You can see it's starting to go already. That's it. Boom. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this out, take these hinges off, and we'll get ready for the paint this black now shortly. So I'll update you guys when it gets all these little buttons out. We'll get some masking tape. We'll clean up and roughen this up a little bit. I just want this like a flat black to kind of mimic the new style ones you can see over here and that's it we'll continue on so i got the windshield done here i got some clear coat on it 
It's flat black with clear coat over the top of it. So this saw is not too bad, eh? Gotta do the back side and then we are ready to throw this on the Argo and uh, get some rods and stuff like that and get her mounted up. Hey guys, we're back in episode two. I'm not sure where I left off or where it was the last going on. Uh, you know how life gets in the way sometimes. But yeah, we are gonna continue on with the project. It is a rainy day out. And um, one thing I've been wanting to get on this Argo for a while is a front winch. Um, if you'll notice right here, you see the black, uh, like, I think it's called RTV tape or ceiling tape. I had the windshield on, I'm not sure if I filmed it or not, because it's been a while since I've been out here. And um, yeah, I went to drill on, like, uh, you know, the supports, like this, you can see over in that Argo, like it holds the windshield in place. Had this side on, had the windshield on, everything was going good. Went to put this side on, uh, I screwed the bracket on the windshield. I must have nicked the, the glass, like the, the tempered glass, and guess what? My windshield shattered. <laughs> so I had to take the windshield back off, clean up a gigantic mess of glass that was everywhere, and um, don't have the windshield back yet. It is out to the shop, but in the meantime, just going to give you guys a little updates. Um, I have to re-staple the fabric. I had to kind of take some fabric off to, to do what I had to do. Same with down here. I got to kind of re-staple the back of it. Just pull it up. Get someone to help me hold it, staple it. But I got my solid backrest. You see the bungee cord? That, that works out perfect. I can just do my little flip seat. Um, in the meantime, today, I want to tackle, see if I can come up with some type of winch system for the front. And uh, maybe I got my, I mean, my new fuel pump, the colder one, showed up because that little Amazon jobby, that failed. So it turned out to be joke. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is what I'm going to be working with. I've had this winch on the bench now for probably the last year. Got it on a good deal at Costco for literally a hundred bucks. Um, I got a Princess Auto receiver. I want to have a removable winch, ideally. I got some place here. We clean that up, should be able to work with that. For 29 and I find myself wondering what did happen to the last 10? I ran away with my life fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And I team was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. Is this really happening? I can't be too sure. But one day hey guys, so this is my winch plate. I'm just uh, sticking some beads on her. You see the MIG is doing good still. I'm just um, flux scoring this, just, uh, I don't have any gas, just a uh, little old Lincoln down there. Uh, it's turned out pretty good. I got her beaded on the back, it's extremely hot so I'm not going to touch it at the moment. Beaded on the top, I put a few extra on uh, those spots there, that's why it doesn't look like uh, as nice of a job. It actually is fully beaded, but I beaded it again. I might put some more on it. Um, I'm pretty confident in this anyways, because she's welded over around here. She's welded underneath. I got this... Right here, like you see the little small uh, three-quarter square tubing. That's just something for it to kind of rest on a little bit. And also I can build my bumper off that. So that's kind of cool. But other than that, when this uh, cools down a bit, I'm going to put a bit of wells in here and around. Make sure it's not going anywhere because it's got to be able to pull this Argo in case I get stuck. But yeah, it's going pretty good. Um, when this is done, you can see i got some markers I'm going to kind of trim. Just trim the tops, just make it a little decorative. May put another bolt here and there on the other sides, but not bad. It looked a lot better when it's all um, cleaned up. I'm just showing you guys as I'm doing it. Hey guys, just want to do a little update for you guys. I lost some of my footage. My camera has been being weird. Um, check out the new homemade bumper I made. I made this out of galvanized pipe that was given to me. A little bit of scrap half inch pipe. Now keep in mind this winch is fully removable, so you can just pull on it. 
see now if I can do this without beating up, uh, beating up the paint job. One second, I'll lay you guys down. <clears throat> so as you can see, the winch is fully removable. Uh, this bumper, it's just basically a scrap made bumper out of scrap metal, painted up. Um, lay the winch down here. What I'm going to be doing in the future, when I get um, back some time to go back at this again, I'm going to weld on some hinges, some like little hinge points, and I'm going to have a flip up rack. Over there you might see a horde of frames and stuff. Um, the rear racks, I'm going to be modifying them off a big red or three wheeler and adding a bit of metal just to save money. I, I like to make it fully out of conduit pipe, but it might cost me about 80 bucks materials currently. So I'm going to modify one of those um, back racks and I'm going to add some pipe to it and make it work for this application. I'm just doing it cheaper is all I'm doing. If I wanted to do it properly and want to spend more money, I certainly can. Don't mind my temporary wire harness. i got to fix my fuel pump. Uh, what I was talking about before, this is my bungee cord. I got this here to make my flip seat easy to access. Nice and easy. You can see uh, the flip seat is down there. I have the tray. I modified it a bit to fit nicer. It don't really, you don't really need this bungee cord, but you can see it's kind of a little bit awkward, especially if you're sitting down on it. It might be a little bit awkward to pull this up. You just grab the bungee cord. Boom. Um, for the back down here, this is my homemade rear hitch. I don't know how well it's going to work out. At the very least, it'll carry my outboard motor. So I'm going to put like an outboard motor bracket, slide it in, put a pin in, where I can put the winch on it. I have it also a section down here. I left this section down below. I can put a winch down there. Or I can slide this in like the factory um, trailer hitch. Pin down there, pin here, and a pin point here. I have that braced up with some gussets as well. But that's how that turned out. I actually did this on videos. And um, for some reason my camera did not like recording it. But she is shaping up. I like that bumper. It looks pretty cool, eh? Okay, guys. I'm going to call this Operation Front Rack for the Argo. I have a Honda Big Red Rack. Big Red 250. You can tell it's a bit rough shape. Some of this is kind of getting like scaly down here. So, and I want a front rack. So we're going to be modifying this because I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> to buy a conduit and to make up a nice rack... I'm looking at maybe 150 bucks in conduit. It's really expensive now. Um, for like a 10 foot piece, actually, no, it's probably a little bit less, maybe $100. For a 10 foot piece, I'm looking at about $26 here locally, plus tax, $30 for a piece of conduit. Um, this is steel and it's strong. And I got some leftover half inch pipe as well. So my plan is I'm going to chop the lower sections. I'm going to have this straight, well done, a couple bars here chop like down here and I'm gonna eventually have a cool rack so I'll take you guys along no idea how it's gonna turn out I've never seen anyone do this this is gonna be experimental let's have some fun Um, you might see the box over there it says Kohler on it. I had an OEM original fuel pump show up. <laughs> I went through, put it on, and guess what? It did not pump fuel. So, um, I'm after having a bit of a headache, was uh, trying to get these electrical, or not, not electric, but trying to get these diaphragm, uh, essentially mechanical driven pumps working. I had uh, the original fail. Um, I tried to start the Argo, it's dead. I had, um, Amazon one on, Argo ran perfect for maybe one day, the next day wouldn't start, pump was dead, and now I just have an OEM Kohler one that you can see over there, 
my Honda WD-40, and um, that one don't work. So it could be a mixture of cheap parts, um, and also maybe my camshaft is worn down. But what I have set up here now, I have a electric fuel pump. You can see the filter filter down there. So basically inline coming right out. Um, I got the tray on the floor over there. But uh, just so you guys can see, here's my tank. There's suction from the tank. Goes through a fuel filter, through an electric pump. Uh, don't mind these wires. I'm in the middle of doing this, but I'll show you. I have them so I can quick disconnect them. I actually have a spare identical pump to this over there and uh, could also order another one but basically I have it as kind of like a module pump so if this fails I'll do off the two hose clamps unplug the two bullet connectors swap into other fuel pump get you back out of the woods so I wanted to go with that redundancy um, up here I needed a joiner piece I don't have a joiner piece at the moment like I kind of needed a union to put the, the poles together. So I use this uh, this fuel filter. It's actually broken off. It's supposed to be longer. So either I can replace with a secondary or second fuel filter, which is not really going to matter, or just a union. I don't mind having a fuel filter, but I will need to replace this one. But I'll show you guys what it's running like. Um, in terms of power, I tapped into the OEM switch. I just followed what the fan was powered off. I uh, put one right here. And then I have a ground down on the other side on the battery. Um, I'm not expecting this to cause me any trouble because it's literally only a 2 amp draw from that pump. But basically as long as the key is on, she's getting fuel. Uh, if I don't like that, for whatever reason, I'll just put it on a secondary switch. And then that way, like maybe go off the power off that one and just put it on another switch to kill it. But let's try it out. This is what she's running like. I think she's running a little bit rich with that fuel pump so I might um, basically do some experimenting might try to get a smaller or less pressure fuel pump or look into a pressure regulator options um, aside from that I might adjust the carb because this engine is used to running on the little mechanical pump that's down there I haven't had so much trouble with a little um, vacuum pump like that so I'm gonna try this electrical one if it gives me too much trouble, first thing it's probably going to do is flood the engine and uh, she won't run. Because um, one thing you got to keep in mind with these little uh, electric fuel pumps, um, you don't really want to go past 7 PSI. If you can stay like 1, 2 PSI, like low pressure, um, that's what you want. Because if you think about it, you're hauling fuel from here, in through the filters, up through the, the, uh, the pump. Because um, well, basically the pump is basically hauling it. And what's going on is that you're plumbing it right into the curb. If you got too much pressure, it's going to flood the bowl. That little seal on the needle, that most likely is not going to be able to prevent the fuel from getting past it because it's just due to the pressure. So the fuel ends up getting past your little needle, in through your air intake, down into the cylinders, and can cause a rich environment, flood your engine. So I'll do some experimenting. If this causes me trouble, um, I might try a lesser or different, maybe a lower pressure fuel pump if they're out there. I'll have to do some research. And if not, I don't really want to go with that um, that OEM style fuel pump. If not, I might look into uh, using a vacuum port off the engine somewhere. I'm not too sure. 
I got an engine over on the floor that I'll use um, just as a reference and see if I can use a skidoo fuel pump like off a snowmobile because they're usually better pumps this one's a cam drive which I'm not a fan of because <laughs> it's basically uh, exposed to a lot of heat right there aside from that you're literally um, if the camshaft wears down you got no fuel so um, and that's just that lobe that's a uh, fuel pump cam lobe is what you'll see in there all right guys so anyways that's uh, experimental as you guys can tell um, what I'm gonna do here now um, I'm gonna crack on um, we're getting that windshield on when the windshield's on I might try to put the canopy on and then it's just button her all up do uh, the headlights do the wiring for the winch all the easy stuff oh also I forgot to mention um, where I'm gonna be running a electrical fuel pump for the time being I have a alternator order so you guys will see an alternator homemade kit made by me I might use the brackets that I have my support brackets because you can see I got the frame frame support brackets um, for the winch I might use that but I'm gonna have an alternator normally uh, the little voltage regular that sits here might charge two amps not even that a couple millimeters it just basically acts milliamps I mean to say it just acts like a trickle charger um, I got a 20 amp alternator gonna be coming on this bad girl so she'll keep that fuel pump going and she'll keep my winch going my lights going if I want to add a cab heater she'll do that as well okay guys so uh, last day I got the windshield on which is nice windshields nice and glass it is um, get the wiper on manual wiper that's gonna be cool and now I'm just trying to fit on this broken canopy that I bought it's really hard to find a nice used canopy so I brought the, bought this one broken the guy had it up extremely high hooked it into a tree broke it up and um, a couple things I'm noting this is like a cloth so my father was mentioning you can buy like silicone spray that makes this kind of waterproof so I'm gonna be doing that aside from this I've been messing around I'm not sure how I'm gonna mount this yet I do have the windows and stuff to fully enclose it over on the shelf in the back there. I'm just trying to figure out the height. And what I think I'm going to do is you, you see these bows. It has uh, two big bows on it. I think I'm going to add another one because when I'm adjusting this, if I have a bow coming up here and like kind of going over to hold it up high like that, kind of up over your head where you would sit to, that would make a lot of sense. I would say that this maybe had one on it originally and it's been broke off. I'm not too sure. So I'm just trying to make this work. Don't mind that it's all sitting right crooked and, and uh, awkward there now. I'm just getting ideas as all. But I like the idea of having a canopy. Especially for the fall. This rig here is mainly going to be the Moose Hunter rig and uh, the backcountry rig. Take up the cabin. Keep in mind we do have the brand new ones. But um, you can't beat the old sound or the old colder. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, the electrical fuel pump, you can see that's plumbed in. I gotta tidy up the wiring. It's actually on quick disconnects. So all I gotta basically carry is the spare pump, which I'll probably put underneath the new flip seat and uh, screwdriver. So if I get, lose my uh, fuel pump in the woods, it might be one minute or two minutes and I'll have that swapped out with another one. But I'm certainly moving along. I still need to do a few posts for the front rack. Not finished there. Got to drill uh, the bilge port. Might drill two ports. And have it even on both sides. And I got to paint up the rims. Aside from that, um, within the next few days, I should have my new alternator in the mail. I have a uh, 20 amp alternator. And uh, a voltage regulator ordered. If the voltage regulator... Um, doesn't work properly. I'm actually gonna take one off a of big red because Honda always produce school quality parts and um, I'll go with that and wire it up So I'll be able to uh, run my winch and the lights all that good stuff. Maybe a cab heater. We'll see what happens But yeah, I think no matter how I position this I'm gonna need another bow One that kind of comes like down here. You can see I got the, the plastic ones I bought for a boat. They should work fine mount it here i need to get some more conduit i don't have enough you can see a piece back there i don't really have enough to finish it come up here with it do a nice bow my pipe bender or tube bender and uh stick it on the other side 
and then I have my driver side bow. I think that'll be a bit nicer. Um, in terms of the clips, I have lots of these little button clip things that goes on here. The guy gave me a bunch of them. So, and then for the side, I have a lot of those as well, like the snap them in. But we'll see what happens um, with the sides. They're actually rolled up. The guy never actually put them on at all. So they're like brand new, the side pieces are. All right, guys, just a little update. I am still working on things. I need to get some quick pins for the windshield and uh, touch up some of the paint where it was scratched when I got the glass replaced on her. But the, the guys did a great job with it. I got that done here locally. Dropped it off. They had it done literally the next day. I brought it to one place. I was waiting three weeks and the guys never touched it. Brought it to another place and they had it done the next day. So I always pay to shop around and look for different companies. All right, guys, a uh, little update. I'll uh, crack on here now shortly, and uh, I'll give you guys a further update on what's going on. But as you can see, I'm pretty much trying to get the canopy on here now. There goes running. We're getting things clued up and moving ahead.